So um, in the memory management, we divide the, we actually use two different concepts. One is called logic address and the, the other one is physical address. Physical address is actually, you know, basically organized into um, units called a cell or sometimes called a words. Now, the cell size is fixed. Okay, so it's fixed. So typically, it's actually it basically ranges from uh, uh, one byte to the early computer system to up to like four bytes. Okay, that's typically the cell size or word size. And uh, so now, depend on the location. So we we basically interpret the physical address in terms of memory address. So so we organize the cells or words into a sequence. And the first word in the sequence is called address zero, address one, address two, and the three, and the four. That's how the physical address is organized. Now also, the logical address is also organized in pretty much the same structure as the physical address, the logic address. So logic address is basically, um, if, you know, also start from the address zero, one, two, three, okay. It should be the similar structure as a physical address. However, the logical address is, is, is imaginary address because it's when you actually write the computer program, once you compile the program, uh, link the program to create a load module, the module that the will be eventually loaded into the physical memory. So, so the load module is basically um, a comp software that, that consists of a whole bunch of instructions. So then typically the first instruction is stored in the address zero and the second instruction is stored, you know, organized in this order. Okay. So then the logic address, it basically always starts from zero. Okay. One, two, and, and then depend on the size of the program, it could be, you know, different than the physical address. The physical address could be what it contains like a N words. And logical address could contains N M words. Okay. So the last address is going to be N minus one because we start from zero. So each time when you try to execute the program so you have to load the logic address into the physical address now for each program we we have we can form a logic address starting from zero one two and because in the modern computer system you can support multiple process multiple actual programs uh, which eventually going to be loaded into the physical address. So technically, we hope that the, the logical address is going to match the physical address, which means the, the first instruction should be loaded in, which is located in the memory address zero, should be loaded into the physical address zero. And then the logical address one should be loaded into physical address one. That's the hope, right? which is actually doable for earlier computer system where we only support one program each time. Now, in modern computer system, that's not a possible because if we support multiple programs, then you each program, the logical, ad, ad, logical address corresponding to each program, you know, has its own memory address zero. 
as its own memory address zero. So if we try to load the logical address, uh, the, the program into the physical memory, then there's no way you can actually match the logical address and the physical address. Okay. So, so if, you know, so that, that's the reason why you have to create some kind of, uh, you know, me memory address translation. So you actually going to map the logic address to the physical address and the logic address zero may not be necessarily loaded into the physical address zero. Okay. So then you need a uh, same kind of mapping. Okay. So we discussed, um, various different approach, send of the approach, they, we have, to, in send of the approach, we're going to load the whole program, logical program in the consecutive area in the physical memory address. So, so if we, if, so we have to load the whole things in the same location in the physical memory address. Um, so, this actually leads to some of the uh, memory management issues. We use a various different um, memory uh, mapping schemes like uh, uh, best of fit, uh, uh, next of fit, uh, the first of fit, or the worst of fit, right? So we just actually, for each of the program, depending on the size of program, we're going to check the memory to see whether we have a big hole, which is big enough to accommodate this particular program. If we can, then we load the program. If we cannot, then the program has to wait. Or we have to actually do the swapping, that the swap son of the program, which is currently in the memory, out of the memory to the back, back, back storage. And then free up son of these memory space to create the big uh, hole, which is big enough for the new, for the new incoming program. So you can load the incoming program into the memory. And the, once the program is complete, then once it's actually the memory is freed, hopefully the, 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 the program that was swapped to the back storage will be swept back. So these are the different approach. Okay. Now, the memory loading, uh, they're actually, in, in to load the memory, so we first need, you know, the programs first is actually created as the source code, okay? Source code, okay. And then we compile the code into something called object code. Object code is actually the binary code. And then the object code may, may be able to be run, um, but the ob sometimes you need to actually link the object code with some other object code or the code from the library. So then we're gonna actually using the link to create a load module. So that's called object module. Okay, load module. And the load module can be actually eventually loaded into the physical memory. So the load module basically combine all these different objects and the library module into one giant logic address, you know. So then eventually can load into the physical memory. Now in the loading, then there are two different types of loading. One is called a dynastatical. Um, so when you actually link all these modules together, there are two type type of link. One is called a statical linking. The other one is dynamic linking. So the statical linking is basically so all these modules are linked together during the compiler time. So you can directly load this load module into the, the physical memory. Now the dynamic loading, um, the dynamic linking 
is basically so it's it's basically you know for certain of the code it's not going to be loaded into the memory only when this piece of code is called then it will actually load this piece of code into the memory that's called a dynamic loading so the dynamic loading basically utilize basically improves uh, memory utilization by postponing the linking and the loading of any module until module is actually needed during the execution okay so we actually actually give you the example before so um so the the, the difference between dynamic uh, link in the uh, and the and the statical linking so we we did that so the dynamic linking, it's basically motivated by the fact that the, the physical memory is relatively small. So once you actually create, compile, and create all the object module, and so you before you execute the, the program, so you're going to load the program into the physical memory. But we realize that the sum of the modules may not be actually used immediately. So they may actually, so if we load everything into the physical memory and then that physical memory is gonna be used, but sum of the code, sum of the modules, which is loaded into the physical memory will never be called. So never be used. So that's why, um, to support more program with a limited physical memory, we only load small portion of the the program, and and then so we start to execute this small portion of the program. And every time when this piece of action module is is calling the other part of the module, and then if that other part of the module is not loaded, then you can actually dynamically load the module into the physical memory and the you know call the, the, the code so the loading the, the link in the loading is actually dynamic okay so the loading of a module that are not called during the execution is avoided entirely so you do so this can actually save some of the physical memory okay one of the example for the dynamic linking is the Windows uh, DLL, which is actually a pretty good feature, but also the feature that causes a lot of problems. Sometimes when you run your program, you're probably gonna get the system error, say DLL not found, okay? That's because, you know, you, cr you hope that, the, you know, in a the, in the Windows operating system, Windows operating system allow people to create many uh, functions or many code and compile it and uh, compile it as a dynamic linking. It's called a dynamic linking library. So so these these files are called the DLL files. So the DLL files actually put in the in one of the uh, hard disk in the, in the, in, the, in the operating system in one particular folders. Okay, in the system folder. So once you create these DLL files and put it in the system, you know, in a in, in dedicate the folders, and then, so, so when you write the code, when you write the code, and then, you actually gonna call a particular function, which is in the library. So, then. You are not going to actually load this piece of code into the physical memory. So say, okay, I load that when I call the function, and then I actually going to actually load this piece of inner library so I actually directly call it. Okay. So basically, I'm not going to load this. What I do is I put something called a stub in there. The stub basically provides enough information for the operating system to load this 
on the run. So, so any so this is actually Microsoft ways to so these actually Windows DLL file, which mostly, uh, in, uh, mostly actually the functions in the Windows operating system that implemented, but not loaded into the library, uh, not loaded into the memory. But when we actually call it, and then it will trigger the stubber, and the stubber, stubber basically just tells you, okay, it's not in library, uh, it's not in the in the in the memory, so I'm gonna actually start load a piece of the DLL file into the memory and reset the program counter. So then the program counter is the the, the memory address that the you know the program gonna access next time. So so then you're gonna start to actually execute execute it. So so it's basically loaded at, uh, on the run. Okay. So typically, um, the DLL functions are mostly the functions that uh, that will be used, but not frequently used. Okay. Now, if you're going to frequently use a function, you had better actually load the function into the memory, because if you have to call the, the function frequently, you know, ex, you know, if you load it into the memory, it's going to be faster to access the function. But certain of the functions, they will be called or may not be called, but it, even if it's, it's called, it will be called. It's, it's not free, it will not be frequently called. So in that case, using the, um, the dynamic linking library is probably a good solution. So the dynamic linking and the sharing, so it's basically, you know, it's it, the sharing is the act of linking that the same copy of module to uh, multiple other modules. Okay, so so you can actually do the dynamic linking. So once actually the function is gets called, and then it will call the stubber. The stubber basically going to tell tell the operating system say, okay. This is dynamic link library code. And so I'm gonna load this piece of code into the memory. Okay. Once it's loaded into the memory, and then if another program wants to call the same function, and then the operating system can check, oh, this piece of function has been loaded already. So then you're gonna point the actually uh, program counter into that piece of code and start to execute. So then this piece of code, actually the li dynamic link li library code, once it's loaded, it can be shared by many other programs. Okay. Now here's the example. Now, if you actually read the design book, it will be very nice because this is actually like animation, but here uh, I cannot run the animation. So, so, um, so this is actually code based register. Okay, it's it's kind of a register in the computer uh, CPU just tells, you know, what's the current, you know, memory address we need to ex execute. Okay. So this this one start from the main program, initially start from main program. And then it's going to continue to execute until uh, it reaches the function call f okay now during the function call it find out oh there's a stub over here so that means it's a dynamic linking library so the function is not currently not loaded so then it will basically replace with the call of function and then load the function into the computer memory and set the the, the code base register to to the beginning of this function. So this is actually the memory address that the point to the function map. F and the, I actually change the CRP uh, to point it to the function. So you're gonna start to execute the function. Okay. So this is how it, uh, so program P 
is executing the main function pointed by the code base register CRP and the call to the external function F has been replaced by stub. Now, if F, F is called, the linker find and load F into the memory. So the linker basically load the function into the memory. Okay. The stub is replaced by call to the F, which translates the control of the new module by storing new non address of F into the CRP. So you basically set these program counter to the address of this function. Okay. Once it's loaded and uh, into the memory location, and that memory location is copied into the program counter. Okay, so the program counter start to actually execute this pro program. So during the dynamical linking and the loading, you might actually see some kind of performance slow down. Okay, so it may not be very, you know, sometimes you, you because when you actually call this function, call this external function f, it's not in the memory, right? So you have to actually trigger the loading of the function into the memory and then reset the memory address to, to point to that function, okay? After it's loaded, after it's loaded. So that takes some time because loading the function from the hard disk into the memory, that's very slow. It's much, much slower than just to actually fetch the instruction from the memory. It's, you know, the c communication between CPU and the memory is extremely quick. But if you actually try to load the function from the hard disk into the memory, that's relatively small. So sometimes it's like a thousand or even 10,000 slower than the memory access. So you just need to realize that's the, uh, I don't know why I just hit some key. So that's the trade off for the dynamic linking. So, so you have a CPU. So basically you have a CPU here. You have a memory here. And you have a hard disk. So, so once, if you want to learn the program, so you're going to load the program from the hard disk into the memory. Okay. Now with the dynamic linking, you are not necessarily load everything into the memory. You know, you only load a small portion of the program into the memory. And then the CPU then start to fetch the instruction between memory and, you know, uh, to into the uh, register. Okay. In the CPU. So typically, when we talk about the speed, the communication between CPU and the memory is pretty fast, okay? And this communication between here and here, it's extremely slow. It's it's probably like a, a, a thousand times slower than the communication between CPU and the memory. So that's why dynamic load linking is really, you know, with dynamic linking, the performance is gonna suffer. Now, fortunately, it's a kind of trade-off because these dynamic linking function are not re really frequently called function like uh, this particular function. So it's actually less frequently called. So when we actually check, when we balance the performance of the program, be balance between the performance and also the memory usage, we find out it's, it, you know, we can actually sacrifice some performance to gain more memory space, because instead of actually loading the uh, loading this F into the memory at the compiler time, then this function will always in the memory. It's gonna take the memory space, even though this memory space is not gonna be used frequently. So that's very, you know, that's not really efficient in terms of memory utilization. So that's why we don't load the F into the memory until we actually call the function, okay, F. It's a trade-off between performance 
and the memory utilization. So now dynamic sharing, as I say, it can be so that piece of code. Okay, once the you know the program the program M call this function F, and then it's gonna replace the the external function F. It's gonna replace the stub with the Oh, actually, once they call the function, you're going to load the function into the memory. It's a dynamic loading. Once it's loaded, and then it replaces the stub with the actual memory address of this function. Okay. Once it's loaded, now if some another function, another program, try to call the f, and then it can actually lo it quickly load the change the stub into the memory address of this function and point to this program counter of this program into the same memory location. So that F can be shared. Okay. That's a dynamical sharing. Okay. Okay. Um, we're done with the first part of the memory management. That means we try to load the whole program into the consecutive memory location and then we use various di different techniques to handle this. Now we find out we find out that the, the memory loading uh, memory management was not really efficient if we try to load the whole program into the same memory location into the consecutive memory location. We find out it's not really that efficient because of this 50% rule, right? Remember the 50% rule. So that means using typically, if you try to load all the programs in the same memory location, most likely the, the memory that, that I used versus the whole is two versus one. So that means the memory utilization is typically like uh, two third. So for all the memory space, one third of the space will not be loaded with program. And these are called a hole. And uh, only two thirds are loaded. That's a pretty low memory utilization, two third. That's probably like a 66%. Okay. So what does that mean is even we even if we claim I have like a four gigabyte memory. So but the actual memory usage is only like a 66% of this four gigabyte. So it's actually less than less than three gigabyte of a memory usage. Okay. So most of the memory space is going to be wasted. Okay. So, so people actually start to search for a very different approach to increase the memory utilization. Uh, one of the approach is called paging. Okay. Now, why we're going to use the page? Um, so now let's actually, before we actually talk about the paging, the first thing we're going to talk about the traditional memory loading approach. So we can talk about the main disadvantage of the dividing memory into variable partitions. Um, the main disadvantage is the external fragmentation. So this basically means if we actually load the program into the same memory location, we find out that, uh, you know, after we actually run the system for, for a long time, you know, so, that, so then we can, now initially we can load the program, say, okay, load the program over here, load the next program over here, 
load the next program over here, over here. So we, we try to actually load the program in, in a nice way that the, it's going to be used efficiently. However, we cannot keep that for long because some of the program going to be, you know, going to finish its job and then they're going to actually quit the job and then free up the memory space. So that leave a uh, one hole over here. Okay. So one more program is loaded and the son of the program and actually finished the job and uh, it was uh, removed from the, or quit the memory space. So then they're going to leave a hole, right? So after actually you learn the pro, you, you actually, oh, you know, use the system to run multiple program. It's in, in, you can imagine that the, you know, some of the new actually programs that want to load it in, want to be loaded into the memory and the son of the program just finished the job was actually moved from the memory, free of the memory. So eventually it's going to be actually, you know, the, the memory gonna gonna look like this. So some of the memory space are loaded with the program and then there are actually holes in between. So the holes are scattered all over the places. These are the the uh, fragmentations. It's called external fragmentations. We talk about how to you know um, improve this or improve this actually the uh, the memory usage by using something called a com compaction, right? So that means we try to push all the program towards one direction, just like the uh, the defragmentation for the uh, computer hard disk in, in Windows operating system. Okay. But that's also a very slow process gonna impact the performance. So now the designer of the computer operating system decide that the, they want to actually use another approach. This approach is called paging, okay? Now, paging actually requires the support of the hardware. Paging requires the support of the hardware, okay? When we actually do the paging, then we need to actually make sure that the, the, the manufacturer of the, the memory should actually support this paging. Uh, mechanism. So here's how the paging going to do. So the paging divides both the logical address space and the physical memory into so the contiguous equal sized portion partitions, okay, such that the, any logical partition can be mapped into any physical partition. Okay, here's what we can do. Okay, so for the physical memory address. Remember that the, originally we're gonna actually say physical memory address is partitioned into the units called words. Okay, uh, each word actually is, is probably like a four bytes or something. Now, the words actually, it's a, a kind of partition, but it's it's too small. So, so then what we try to do is we can actually partition the physical memory into a fixed size units. These units are much bigger than words, okay? And then fix size the units. You know, maybe. 256 words combined together to create one unit called a page. Okay, so it's a fixed size contiguous block of logical edges. Uh, so in the physical memory, we're going to actually divide this physical memory into something called a frame. So instead of using the words, we're going to use something called a frame. Frame typically are lo much larger than the words. Okay. So so
So now we, when we measure the physical memory, we basically can measure the phys physical memory space in terms of the number of frames. Frames. Okay. On the other hand, for the logical memory, if we have a program, we're also going to divide the program into, you know, a fixed size called a page. Another page. Now the page size and the frame size should be the same. Okay, page size and the frame size should be the same. Okay. So that's basically the configuration. Uh, so we can interpret the page frame. The frame is the smallest unit of data for memory management and may con contains a copy of any pages. Okay. So the frame, because now when we talk about program, the program can be organized into pages. So now the program, uh, one program may contain 100 pages. Okay. Now then how when you load the program into the memory because memory is also organized into a page frame okay so the page frame has the same size of page in the logical address that's a physical address so the page size and the page frame size is the same so now when you load the the program, logical program into the program into the physical memory. If the program requires 100 pages, then all we need is to make sure that the physical memory has 100 friends, okay, page friends. Now, whether these 100 page frames are in the same location or not, that's not important. So that's the idea for the paging. Okay. Now, so, so here's what we supposed to do. Now we have two programs, program one, which, which has three pages. Okay. Page zero, page one, page two. And another program has two pages, page zero and page one. And then the physical memory is organized into frame, the frame, the size of the frame is the same as a page. Okay. So now when we load the program one into the physical memory, so you can actually just to say, okay, I can load page zero into friend number zero, okay? Page one into friend number one. But friend number two is not available, right? So then I can find another page, okay, over here. I, I, I'm sorry, another friend, which is over here, which is friend number six. That friend is available. So I can load the page two of the program one into friend number six. Professor, yeah. Why would it not load into frame three? Because oh. it looks like frame three is available. So, why would it skip that? That's a good question. Um, the answer is, I don't know. Actually, I, I know that, but but because depend on the, you know, so the algorithm we use. Because when we actually load the page into the frame, there's a certain kind of algorithm called the page uh, replacement algorithm or whatever. So in that case, so sometimes you are not going to actually, so you, so now the, the idea for this is really the page and the frames are completely 
separate concept because then you don't have to say, you know, when you load the next page, page two, the page two has to be, you know, closer to the other pages. Now that's not a necessary requirement anymore. You know what I mean? So there's may, may, there's various different reasons why you probably not load into the three. Probably when page two is loaded into the pro, uh, when page two try to be loaded into the memory, and uh, friend number three is not available, and then you and the, and the friend number five is not available, and then you have to load the page two into friend number six, and after you load the pre, the page number two into friend number six, and then later on, friend number three and a friend of a five is freed up, freed you know because the other program finished the job and free up the memory space so there's various different reasons yeah it's a good question why you not so it could be yes if, if fr friend number three is available you could actually load the page number two into friend number three but the point is not this the point is if you have a if you have a program with, with three pages, then you don't need to find a memory which can memory space, a consecutive memory space that can hold these three pages. The point is, as far as you can find three friends in the computer memory, and regardless where are these three, three, friend, uh, three friends are located, then you can load the program. That's the point. Do I, do I answer your question? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's kind of random. So I'm so that's why in this particular problem, I don't know why it's it's loaded into six, but but it could be three. So and if any any frame which which are free, then you can load the you you can load the page to any frame which are free, you know, uh, which is free. However, so you can load uh, any page number one, two, three into, you know, three different um, frames. And for page, for program two, there are two pages. And you can load page zero of program two into frame number two. I load the page number one into friend number four. Okay. Again, I cannot answer why, <laughs> in this case, why you don't actually load two and a th page zero and a one in, in the consecutive areas, like a page zero into two, page one into three. Why this is, looks like better, right? But the point is, once you load it into these different frames, now, the point is the computer actually operating system, the computer actually memory management of the operating, operating, you know, memory management part of the operating system should be able to manage these, you know, mapping. Because you want to make sure, you know, once you load page two into page uh, friend number six, the memory management should be able to, you know, record this mapping. So, when people try to access the code in page two, they can actually really find this code in, in the memory, right? That's a key point. So that's why for the paging, one of the important part is called a page, page, page table. The ta page table contains two portion. One is the page number, 012. So that's the page number. And the other part is the friend number. Okay. So page zero loaded into friend number zero, page one loaded into friend number one, and the page two loaded, loaded into friend number six. So that page table should record which page is loaded into which friend. That's important. You know, you have to make sure that one is recorded. And here, Page number zero loaded into friend number two. Page number one loading into friend number four. Okay.
So when you try to execute the program, say, okay, I want to execute the first instruction here, and then the operating system memory manager to find out, oh, this is actually the first instruction in the local logical address. And then where is this instruction loaded into the memory? Because eventually the CPU is going to fetch the instruction from the physical memory, not from the logical memory, right? So CPU need to know exactly where this instruction is loaded in the physical memory. So you need to look at the page table and find out, oh, page zero is loaded into friend number zero. Um, the, the first instruction in the page zero should be this one here. So that's the physical memory location I'm going to start. Same thing with this, okay? So when I actually start to execute the program over here at the very beginning in page zero, and then I need to look at the page table and find out where is page zero. Page zero is in friend number two. And so I can start from the beginning of friend number two. So I start the program one, uh, program two in this physical memory location. That's the important thing. You need to record, you know, which, which page maps to which frame, okay? That's the paging. That's the concept of the paging. And now, how we actually execute this logical and physical address thing, okay? So I'm gonna actually, so this is, is the same as this one. So I, I'm gonna actually, uh, so here's the deal. Now, remember that the physical memory address, suppose the physical memory address is contains M bits. Which basically support the total number of uh, 2 to the M uh, physical memory address, right? Now, the logic address is depend on how big the program is. So, the logic and memory address is probably not that big, it's probably actually contains M bits. So, so the size of the address space is of the form 2 to the n. That's a logical address space. Well, n is the number of bits necessary to form address for the entire space, for the logic address. Okay. So now, when the logic address is partitioned into a page, the page size uh, is of the form 2 to the k, where k is the number of bits needed to address every word in the space. So basically, you're going to divide the logic address into two parts. This part is the k bits. Okay. Now this part, because total is m bits, so if I take k bits over here, and then the remaining going to be n minus k bits. Same thing with the physical memory address. I use k bits and m minus k bits. Okay, now you prob probably still going to be confused. Let me actually give you um, a detailed example to illustrate this concept. Okay, suppose I use five bits. Okay. I use five bits. Now with five bits, how many memory address I can use? I can actually I can actually store, you know. With total of five bits, how many total number of address I can represent? Two to the five, right? So which is actually in terms of binary, it's actually from zero 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 all the all the five bits are zero zero zero. Two, one, 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 one. All one. 
that that's total of two to the five. Um, that's the number of address space I can represent. Now, if you actually convert this binary number into a decimal, so zero 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 represent one, one 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 basically represent thirty one. Okay. Now you need to understand how how can you convert between binary and the decimal, right? Um, for binary, if it's one 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 one, so that one represents one. The second one represents two, right? That represents four, and this one represents eight, and this this represents sixteen. So you're gonna add all these numbers together, which is thirty one. So, so this is actually the physical memory. No, not a physical. It's a logical memory scheme. I use five bits. Okay. So the first one, that's zero. Second one, that's one. Two. One, one, that's three. One, zero, zero, that's four. One, zero, one, that's five. Six. One, 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 that's seven. Okay. And the last one is 31. So I divide the logical address into two parts. Okay. Now this part I use two bits. Okay. And this part I use three bits. And these three bits is called offset. Okay. Now with three bits, I can represent how many different numbers. For three bits, how many different numbers I can represent. With three bits, if you want, you can, you can say, I can represent uh, Zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one 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 zero one 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 seven eight eight right total of eight so that's actually total of eight address okay and uh, now so with this eight and the first one first two bits are all zero. Okay. So that number over here represent the page number, which in this case is page zero. Okay. And that's the offset. Basically represent the size of the page. So page zero contains eight memory edges. Okay. And then the next eight, if I divide it into two, that's the offset using three bits. And two bits represent one zero, one zero, one zero, uh, and zero, one zero, that means page one. Okay. Now, what's the next one? Next memory address. After zero 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 one one one, they're gonna be one zero 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 zero, right? So I'm gonna continue. It's all one zero. The last one is one one one, and that's page three or page two, because that number is one one zero. That's two, and the last one is one one. That's three. Page three. So basically, I can divide the physical, uh, logical address. If I use five bit address, I can actually divide the address into two parts. Okay. Now, if I use the three bits for the offset and two bit, 
basically represent the page page number. Now with two bit, I can represent total of four pages, right? With two bits, because that's that's two to the two to the two. That's two square, which is four. And then so that means I can divide fifty six of uh, 50 bit, uh, five bits, I'm sorry, not 56. I can divide five bits into, I can divide five bits into um, four pages. Each page contains eight address. Does it make sense? Now, that's one petition. I can petition the physical uh, logic address with for for five bits into into different petition. Now, that different petition is like this. So if I use two bits for the offset, okay, instead of three bits. And then that's gonna leave three bits for the page number, okay? Now with two bits, I can represent 0, 0, 0, 001, 1, 0, 1, 1, four address, okay? Now this basic number represent a page number, okay? And then the next four, that's page one. That's page zero. And the next four, that's, okay, I'm sorry. I just cut it here. So that's zero, one, zero, that's page two. And the offset is zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So that's page, and that page four, uh, page three is zero, one, one, page three. So I can do the petition, you know. So if I put the two bits for the offset and three bits for the page, now with, with three bits for the page, I can represent how many page num pages for three bits, how many pages I can represent. You can have eight different pages. You can have eight different page, but each page is smaller, right? Each page only contains three extra edges. So, so you can actually move these, you know, petition these uh, logical address to, if I make uh, the offset smaller, then I can have more pages and each page is smaller. So the offset basically represents the size of the page and the, the, the page number, you know, the, the bit P represent the page numbers. Okay. So when the space is divided into a page of size eight, if the page size is eight, then three bits are needed for offset. Okay. So if the size is eight, then you need a three bits. One, two, three, three bits to represent a size eight. Okay, and the, so the, that leaves the page number into two bits. So you only have two bits look to represent a page number. But if you actually move this one further to increase the page, the bits for the page, decrease the, the bits for the offset, then the page size is smaller because you have two bits. So the page size is, which contains two to the two, that's, you know, four address space, but but you have more space to represent a page number. So the page number is zero, one, two, three, and you can increase. So you can actually, you can leverage these, these bars towards the right or towards the left. If you towards the right, then you make the uh, offset smaller. So the page size is smaller, but you have more space more bits to represent a page number, okay? 
So this is actually kind of a trade-off. So if you want more pages, if you want to petition the if you want to partition the memory into more pages, then the, the size of the page, each size of the page can be smaller. If you want to actually increase the page size, then number of page is going to be smaller, right? So, so that number is actually represented by the bits that the, these bits P represent, um, you know, represent the number of pages and these bits W usually to represent the page size and we call the offset. Now, let's assume I use two bits for the offset, three bits for the page number. So in this case, I can have eight pages, right? Because I use three bits for the page and two bits for the offset. So I have eight pages and the size of the each the size of each page is two to the two four uh, four edges right so I call this page zero page one page two page three okay and last one is page eight which is one 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 represent eight and then I map page zero. Now, the, now, on the other hand, if I use two bits for the offset, that means use two bits to, to accommodate the, the size of the page. And then I have to use two pages for the frame. I have to. And then that leaves four pages for the frame number friend numbers. Remember that the, I use five bits for the logic address. I use six bits for the physical memory address. But the, the address size is different. So physical address is bigger. I use six bits. Logic address is smaller. I use five bits Okay, to re represent logic address. However, because the page size and the frame size is the same. So the W should be same. So the W equals two here, the W should be two here. So four, right? So you have four actually. So basically that means that with the six, with six extra bits, I can represent two to the four friend number which is 16 friend numbers, right? You have 16 friend numbers. So, so that's friend number zero, one, friend number one, and friend number two, and friend number eight. And the last one is friend number 17, uh, 15. That's, so total is 16, because from zero to 15, that's total. Is 15. So in terms of mapping, I can map page zero to friend number one. Okay, I map page number three here to friend number 15. Okay, and that's just an example. I can also map like page one to friend number three. I can do that, right? I'm sorry, that's, that's a wrong line. Okay, let's say I map of, uh, Oh yeah, I map uh, friend number page number one to friend number three, so I can map this. Okay. Now, once I did the mapping, then I also need to create a page table. So, the page table. I can build the page table like this. Okay. So the page table is going to be page zero. Map to friend number one. And the page one map to friend number three. 
And page two, I don't know where page two is mapped to because so far it's not mapped, but um, it mapped to something, okay? And then eventually the last, the page number three mapped to friend number 15. And page number four, because I'm running out of space, there's an, and the last page, page number seven. So I have a total of seven page, three, four, five, six, seven. And each page gonna map to a friend number, okay? So, but I only record uh, page zero, one, and three. Page zero, one, and three. These are, I, I know it's mapped to friend number one, friend number three. But each page should should be mapped to a corresponding friend, uh, depend on which, which friend it's mapped to, okay? So that's the page table. I need to build a page table for each program. Okay. Now, now here's the thing. I use the page table, but when I execute the program, I need to figure out how these each of the memory address, logical address maps to physical address. Because page is actually too big. You know, when I actually execute the instructions, each instruction is located in the actual actual address. So let's say, suppose I, I start actually instruction in memory address, logical memory address 000, 000, 000. Now, how can I actually find out that the corresponding physical address? Okay, so then the first thing I need to figure out is where is the, this address located? In which page? So I look at the first three. I look at the first three bits and find out zero, zero, zero. It's zero, zero, zero. So that's page zero, right? So then I look at the page table, say, oh, that's page zero. And it's back to friend number one. So I can actually go over to the friend number one. Okay. And then once I locate in the friend number one, I need to figure out which pay, which memory, which physical memory address is corresponding to this logic memory address. And then look at the offset, which is zero, zero. And then I look at the physical uh, memory actually address and I look at the offset at zero, zero. So then this particular memory address is going to map to this particular physical address. Now, what about the, the memory address of this, which is the physical memory, uh, physical address is actually mapped by this logic address. So when I do this, I'm going to check first, look at the first three bits, okay, which is 0, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1 is 3. So now I know it's page 3. So then I find out, okay, it's mapped to 15. 15 actually is correspond to 111. So I look at the one say, oh, this is actually mapped to 1111. Okay, so one, that's, the, that's the friend number, 15. And then once I locate the friend number, then I look at the uh, offset, which is 01. Now 01 is over here, 01. So this one is the corresponding uh, memory address. That uh, so this particular physical logical address is going to map to this physical address. Okay, first to locate the locate the friend friend number based on the page table. Uh, so so basically this is what I do. So I what I do is because you know I look at the page table. And I find out, oh, page it's page zero. And now look at the corresponding offset. It's x, y. Then I map the page to the friend. And then I copy the offset. Okay. So the offset basically represents the location in the page. If the offset is zero, zero, zero means the, the first location in the page. Zero, one means the second location in the page. Uh, one, zero means the third location in the page. So the offset basically talk about relative location 
of this particular address in the page and also in the frame. So all I need to do is I need to locate which page is located in which frame and then I just copy the offset. Okay. If this particular address is the third actually address in this page and then it will be the third address in the corresponding friend number, friend. So, so, so that's why I just say this, this, this page gonna map uh, memory location logical address gonna map to this physical address. So that's basically the, you know, the paging. So when I map uh, uh, using the paging, I can map a logical address to the physical address. Okay, we, first from the logic address, I find out what's the page number and then look at the page table, find the corresponding friend number. And then once I find the friend number and then I just say copy the offset because the relative location is the same. If offset is zero, zero, that means at the beginning of the, each page and it's also going to be the beginning of each friend, right? So that's basically the uh, page table solution to map logic address to the physical address. Okay, I think that's pretty much all for today. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm running late. So um, do you have any questions?